One of the things Media Matters has devoted itself to over the last several years is the same thing most of our institutions of power have devoted itself to. It's no longer a participant in debates, in political debates like it used to be. It is now more devoted to ending political debates, to silencing people who are critics of the Democratic Party, who are dissidents to the pieties and orthodoxies of establishment liberalism. And one of the ways they accomplish that is that they accuse everybody who disagrees with them of being racist, bigots, white nationalists, anti-Semites, transphobes. And what they really do is go after corporations who are advertising on any social media platforms that don't censor enough. So when Twitter and its pre-Elon Musk state, Facebook, Google, would allow videos or speakers that Media Matters considers out of bounds, Media Matters would accuse them often of allowing white nationalism, supporting fascism, to put pressure on those big tech companies to censor, just like the ADL does. They basically work hand in hand, the two groups do. Now, one of the things they've been doing over the last several months is targeting the advertisers of both Twitter under Elon Musk and also Rumble by accusing those advertisers, by virtue of advertising on these social media sites, of supporting bigotry, of supporting anti-Semitism, of supporting racism, by virtue of the fact that they're advertising on both Twitter, X, and Rumble. And they've been very successful in getting these corporations to cease advertising on both of those sites. And of course, the crime of both of those sites, in Rumble's case fully, and in the case of Twitter, Partially, they're still trying. The crime is that they are supporting and defending the free speech rights of people to be heard. Now, we covered on Friday night one of the things that Elon Musk did, which is as these corporate advertisers were fleeing acts in large numbers, largely due to the fact that anti, the Anti-Defamation League and Media Matters accused Musk of supporting and endorsing anti-Semitism, Musk, in a kind of self-protective mode, went and imposed a new censorship policy on Twitter saying that no longer could you use phrases like from the river to the sea or decolonization in connection with Israel because he said to do so is to endorse genocide. And the ADL immediately went online and after accusing him 24 hours earlier of being an anti-Semite, it patted him on the head and said, thank you, Elon, good job. And then he said, thank you to the ADL. So that's the kind of game they play is they accuse people of extreme racism or bigotries or anti-Semitism, and the only way out is if you do what they want. So in the case of Media Matters, that means if you're a corporation, the only way out is to cease advertising on the sites that allow people to dissent from liberal orthodoxy. The problem is for Media Matters is they just got caught engaging in a obvious, huge, demonstrable fraud against both Twitter and against Rumble in studies that they published where they purported to prove that major advertisers were being associated with neo-Nazi content or anti-Semitic content or racist content. And when Twitter discovered the fraud, Elon Musk vowed a thermonuclear lawsuit that would be filed today. And we just, seconds before we went on air, received by email the lawsuit that apparently X has filed against Media Matters over what clearly is a fraud. And Rumble has announced that they also intend to uh, either file suit or to support this lawsuit because they've been victimized by the same exact fraudulent tactic. Now, here's the Media Matters study or release that kicked off this latest round of attempting to basically drive Twitter into bankruptcy for its failure to censor more. As Musk endorses anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, X has been placing ads for Apple, Bravo, IBM, Oracle, and Xfinity next to pro-Nazi content. CEO Lindo Yaccarino previously claimed that brands, quote, are protected from the risk of being next to toxic posts. Quote, during all of this Musk-induced chaos, corporate advertisements have also been appearing on pro-Hitler, Holocaust denial, white nationalist, pro-violence, and neo-Nazi accounts. Yaccarino has attempted to placate companies by claiming that, quote, brands are now protected from the risk of being next to potentially toxic content, but that certainly isn't the case for at least five major brands. 
We, Media Matters, recently found ads for Apple, Bravo, Oracle, Xfinity, and IBM. Next, a post that tout Hitler and his Nazi party on X. Here they are. And then they proceeded to take screenshots of ads by those companies next to these posts that they claim are neo-Nazi in nature. And here you see some of them on the screen. So here, for example, is a, an ad for Xfinity, which is here. This is from the Media Matters report. And here you see posts that they say are defending the Third Reich. Let's, let's do some more ignored facts about the Third Reich. And it does defend Nazism. Now, these tweets are seen by almost nobody. You see they have like two retweets. In the case of that last one, no retweets. Here's two retweets. Here's Apple, an ad by Apple. Next to a meme, what people think is a spiritual awakening is like versus what it's actually like. And they have a picture of the Nazis as a spiritual awakening. It got eight retweets. So what they're doing is they're going to these posts that nobody has seen and they're clicking madly. They have multiple people madly clicking until one of these ads come up to try and suggest that the normal user experience is to see Apple ads or Xfinity ads next to neo-Nazi content when in fact it's incredibly obscure stuff that only Media Matters is seeing to the point where they have no views. Now here is a statement from Rumble and the CEO of Rumble, Chris Pavlovsky, saying that they did exactly the same thing, namely in May of this year, or in March of this year, rather. The Media Matters site issued a similar report claiming that Netflix is putting ads on Rumble that are appearing next to pro-Holocaust or Holocaust denial videos. So here is the... Media Matters ad, um, the Media Matters report, rather, where they say from March, ads for Netflix are appearing next to Holocaust denial videos on Rumble. And then here's what they say, quote, Rumble is heavy po heavily populated by far-right figures, and while it claims to have, quote, strict policies against anti-Semitism, the site has not taken down numerous videos promoting Holocaust denial. Media Matters reviewed many of these videos and found that several Holocaust denials videos featured advertisements for Netflix. Here are some examples. And they give an example, Holocaust holes, uh, and another, the hoax of the 20th century, talking about the Holocaust. Now, just like as was true for those tweets that they showed, Nobody saw these videos, literally nobody. They had zero views until somehow Media Matters found them and started clicking on them until they could find Netflix ads appearing underneath them. So here is the hoax of the 20th century, and then here is the Netflix ad. Now, you can see by the number of likes, this has two thumbs up, two. Our videos have hundreds and then thousands immediately, like most videos on Rumble do that are actually watched. Two thumbs up. Who knows who put those two thumbs up? But here is the statement from Rumble today. And through its CEO, Chris Pavlovsky, he says, quote, X is not alone. I can also confirm that Media Matters has purposely misrepresented Rumble. Their dishonesty warrants an immediate investigation at the highest levels. Hint, Speaker Jordan and Jim Jordan and, and Speaker Johnson and Jim Jordan, and I'll bring the receipt. Here's my statement. And then here's the statement from Chris Pavlovsky. Quote, Media Matters is threatened by Rumble's mission to protect a free and open internet. So the reaction is to deceive the public and scare advertisers. For example, on March 14th, Media Matters claimed that advertisements for Netflix, which were appearing on Rumble, had been placed on videos that violated our content policies. However, according to Google Analytics, the week before publication of that Media Matters article, there had been zero page views on that video. Isn't that amazing? How did Media Matters even find that? There had been zero page views on that video. 
That means that the Media Matters activist who took the screenshot was the first human being to actually view the Netflix ad on the video in question. Their story left the false impression that it was a widespread problem. The same is true for most of the videos cited by Media Matters, all of which were removed from Rumble as soon as we were made aware of them. It's clear that Media Matters intends to mislead and deceive about advertisements on Rumble in order to hamper free speech and harm while abiding employers who only want to advertise their products and services. Media Matters doesn't do anything for free, so who is funding this outrageous, outrageous targeting activity? Who is paying them to target free speech, and why are they afraid of free expression online? Speaker Johnson and Representative Jordan, it's time for Congress to ask hard questions. Now, as intended, Netflix left Rumble after that report because they didn't want to be accused, obviously, who would, of advertising next to bigoted content or anti-Semitic content. It's the same reason why, if you're an Israel critic, you immediately get branded an anti-Semite. Just like liberals immediately accuse their opponents of being white nationalists or racist or bigots or transphobes, all you know the panoply of insults. Because if you get branded with those titles, with those labels, those smears, obviously you're going to have a motive to stay silent. It's a silencing method. Now, here is a uh, here is the Google Analytics uh, chart that Chris Pavlovsky was referring to, and you hear, here you see on March thirteenth. And then March 14th, that was the date of the Media Matters report. You can see here the page views were at zero. Nobody had seen those videos. Nobody had seen the Netflix ad. Media Matters was the first human being to see them. And then it suddenly went up once Media Matters brought light to it. Media Matters created this problem. It didn't exist previously. But they were able to drive Netflix away from Rumble, which is the goal, to try and bankrupt sites that don't censor on command. Here, I, is from BBC, the ex-ad boycott gathers pace amid anti-Semitism storms. So you can see how effective this, target, this tactic is. Firms including Apple, Disney, and IBM have paused advertising on X amid an anti-Semitism storm on the site. The boycott has also been picking up steam in the wake of an investigation by a U.S. group which flagged ads appearing next to pro-Nazi posts on X. Left-leaning pressure group Media Matters for America said it had identified ads brought by high-profile firms next to posts including Hitler quotes, praise of Nazis, and Holocaust denial. A spokesman for X told the BBC that the company does not intentionally place brands, quote, next to this kind of content and the platform is dedicated to combating anti-Semitism. Mr. Musk said on Saturday that X would file a, quote, thermonuclear lawsuit against Media Matters, quote, the split second court opens on Monday. On Thursday, IBM became the first company to pull its advertising from the site following the Media Matters investigation, saying the juxtaposition of its ads with Nazi content was, quote, completely unacceptable. The European Commission, Comcast, TV network Paramount, and movie studio Lionsgate have also pulled ad, ad dollars from X. Do you see what they're able to do? just by hurling this accusatory invective at the sites they want to publish, punish for not censoring, advertisers run away in droves. Because media outlets quote and amplify and trumpet whatever Media Matters claims because they're on the same side. That's why it's such a effective and popular tactic to use. Now, one of the things that I think is so important to realize is that if you can drive away a platform's advertisers, then it means that those sites can't exist. So if a site wants to be a free speech site and it relies on advertisers to pay its bills to keep itself running, these kind of tactics where somehow Media Matters finds a video that nobody has saw Nobody knows who put this video up, where it came from, who the creator was. They have no followers. Suddenly there appears a Holocaust denial or an anti-Semitic video or a post that nobody saw until Media Matters found it. Zero views. 
and then they click enough times until they get the ad, and then suddenly they really support a report trying to claim that, oh, if you advertise on X, you're going to appear next to Holocaust denial sites, or if you uh, advertise on Rumble, you will as well in a completely manufactured and fabricated way. I don't know who posted those videos. It could be anybody, but I know that nobody saw them until Media Matters pretended that this was a common experience. That's why X is suing them for creating this defamatory and false image of what the experience is like for corporate advertisers on X, and it costs them tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in advertising alone. Here is the response of the... X safety team where they say stand with X to protect free speech quote this week Media Matters for America posted a story that completely misrepresented the real user experience on X and another attempt to undermine free freedom of speech and mislead advertisers despite our clear and consistent position X has seen a number of attacks from the activist groups like Media Matters and legacy media outlets who seek to undermine freedom of expression on our platform because they perceive it as a threat to their ideological narrative and those of their financial supporters. These groups try to use their influence to attack our revenue streams by deceiving advertisers on X. Here are the facts of Media Matters research. To manipulate the public and advertisers, Media Matters created an alternate account and curated the post and advertising appearing on the account's timeline to misinform advertisers about their placement of their posts. Those contrived experiences could be applied to any platform. Once they curated their feed, they repeatedly refreshed their timelines to find a rare instance of ads serving next to the content they chose to follow. Our logs indicate that they forced a scenario resulting in 13 times the number of ads served compared to the median ads served to an X user. Of the 5.5 billion ad impressions on X that day, less than 50 total ad impressions were served against all of the organic content featured in the Media Matters article. For one brand showcased in the article, one of its ad ran adjacent to a post twice. And that ad ad was seen in that setting by only two users, one of which was the author of the Media Matters article. For another brand showcased in the article, two of its ads served adjacent to two posts three times, and that ad was only seen in that setting by one user, the author of the Media Matters article. That's exactly what they did to Rumble as well, to drive Netflix away. They found videos nobody had watched, and they kept clicking until they got an instance of a Netflix ad next to it. Nobody had seen that Netflix ad next to that, to, to that video except the Media Matters author or whoever works for Media Matters. And then they publish a report trying to make it appear as though Netflix is constantly advertising and supporting content of this kind, whereas obviously Rumble had no way of even knowing those videos existed or who posted them because nobody had actually seen them. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.